Hi, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I was asked a very good question and I wanted to share it with more than just the person who asked it because it was such a good question. And uh, I'm taping this during the COVID-19 pandemic, but it really wouldn't matter when I was, I was taping this because it's a common confusion about autoimmune disease. And autoimmune disease is extremely common. It's uh, three times more common in women uh, than men. Uh, they're assuming it's something with the genetics and um, but or hormones, but that that hasn't been clarified. Uh, but the frequency of autoimmune disease is is really on the rise, and it's not explained. Although genetics is a component of autoimmune disease, the trajectory at which autoimmune disease is rising is not explained by a genetic change because genes just don't change that fast over time. So it's uh, very well accepted that our lifestyle is what's contributing to, to this change. Now specifically having to do with autoimmune and what are you told when you're diagnosed with an autoimmune disease is that you're told you have this hyperactive uh, immune system and it's out of control and depending on the kind of autoimmune disease you have it it needs to be suppressed and very often people are on immunosuppressive drugs uh, this particular person asking the question wanted to know about celiac disease celiac disease is uh, an extremely common autoimmune disease as well but it represents one to two percent of the population, which maybe doesn't sound like a lot, but, but for a disease that's, that's pretty common. And um, for celiac disease, it's really the only autoimmune disease where we know a dietary lifestyle change to make, and that's eat zero gluten. And when you do that, um, you, can, you can get it under control from the viewpoint that your immune system will stop doing the damage to the lining of your small intestine, which is the hallmark of the disease. So celiac is, is an autoimmune disease in an interesting category to itself, but it's still an autoimmune disease. And when you have one autoimmune disease, you're three to 10 times more likely to develop another. So celiac falls within that as well. So let's go back to what autoimmune means. Um, it means your immune system is attacking self. So uh, auto self immune immune system. And of course, what should your immune system be doing? It should be attacking bad guys. So bacteria and viruses and cancer cells and dealing with toxins, that's its job. And it is felt that initially what is happening with somebody developing autoimmune disease is that your immune system is, is doing the correct thing. It's it's attacking a bad guy, okay? Again, it could be food, it could be an infection, it could be a toxin, but it, it launched an attack against that thing that deserved to be attacked. However, uh, for whatever reason, it was unable to successfully annihilate the bad guy. Now, you can see if it's a food you're eating, like somebody who has celiac disease, doesn't know it and continues to eat gluten, well, what's the immune system, you know, going to do? The food keeps coming in, so it keeps getting, uh, trying to handle it, but the food keeps entering the body, so there's not much it can do. The same thing with a toxin or an infection. Um, certainly, the body can launch an attack against an infection and be successful, but it can also launch an attack and be unsuccessful and then just keep trying to attack day in and day out, although it's, it's being unsuccessful. So the reasons for the lack of success have to do with other factors that are making the immune system less robust than it should be. Um, as far as where the uh, infectious agent is, is hiding out, sometimes deep in the crevices of the gut, and it's hard to, hard to um, really isolate and get full eradication. But for whatever reason, uh, so step one, it was attacking what it should attack, but step two, it couldn't get the better of it, all right? So in its sort of frenzy to, to get uh, this attack going you know, harder and more intense, the immune system, your immune system gets into what's called a hypervigilant state where it just starts to get a bit exhausted and overstimulated in this, okay, we're gonna get it, go, 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 right? And um, 
in that hypervigilant now sort of getting tired state, uh, it can make a mistake. And that's called molecular mimicry. So it's a molecule, typically it's a protein. Mimicry just means, right, something that looks like something else. So let's just say we're doing the most common autoimmune disease, which is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So it's an attack on your thyroid. And here's your immune system trying to attack this bad guy, whatever it is, and it gets into this revved up, hypervigilant state. And the bad guy has a protein structure, okay? Whether it's a food or, or an infection. And of course, your body is full of protein. But in this particular case with Hashimoto's, there's a protein in your thyroid that looks very similar. Remember, mimicry. It looks very similar to the bad guy. So the next step is in this frenzy of attack, 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 your body makes a mistake and it starts attacking your thyroid, thinking your thyroid is the bad guy. It doesn't, your immune system doesn't know your thyroid is self. It would never attack self. It's very convinced it's attacking the bad guy. Excuse me, I have an itch. Okay. Um, so then, of course, it's, it's attacking and, and, the, and the attack continues. And let, unless you can kind of uh, reverse this whole thing, which is something here at Root Cause Medicine we do a lot. Uh, so now, before we go into treatment and that sort of thing, Let's get back to this question of, if I have an autoimmune disease, should I not boost my immune system? It's a great question because remember, you've been told you have this immune system that's overworking. So you would think, here's COVID-19, here's this virus or whatever. I mean, all, we always wanna have a, you know, a strong immune system to defend us against any invader that's coming around. Um, but as I said, right now, the, the pandemic is current. So we're talking about that. Uh, so people with autoimmune are saying, gee, do I not boost my immune system because my immune system's already overstimulated? It's, a, it's apples and oranges. You always want a, a robust, um, let's put it this way, intelligently functioning immune system. Now, the fact that with autoimmune, it's into this hypervigilant state and it's identified a certain protein in your body. We use thyroid as an example, so I'm pointing to my thyroid, but wherever it is, wherever the autoimmune disease is, um, you, you have this confusion that's occurred. But that doesn't mean you don't want a strong immune system. So you absolutely do want to support your immune system. Now, for a lot of people on, uh, with autoimmune disease, they're being given an immunosuppressive drug because they're told your immune system's out of control and the only um, way we know, conventional medicine knows to go about it, is suppress the immune system. Personally, as a functional medicine doctor, I think there are much better ways. Now, sometimes someone can be in a pretty dire straight with their a dire circumstance with their uh, autoimmune disease and i won't go into the gory details but uh, sometimes you know that drug has to come in and just sort of chill out the situation because it can you know really get severe but generally speaking you know caught early on or even when somebody's been on the immunosuppressive drugs we can start getting in there and kind of rewinding the problem a little bit. And we've had good success in um, a, across a broad spectrum, anywhere from uh, feeling better still on the drug, uh, feeling better needing less drug, not needing any drug, you know, completely reversed. So there's a broad spectrum in there, but there's a lot you can do. So again, when somebody's on an immunosuppressive drug, they are told if you get a cold, if you get any sort of infection, you really want to keep a very tight rein on it, be in communication with your doctor because that can escalate very quickly to cold turning into pneumonia, turning into serious respiratory disease or, or you know, what have you, depending on the kind of infection you get. 
You're also more likely to get cancer because again, you've quashed your immune system. So that vigilance of the immune system to go cancer cell attack, bacteria attack, it can't do that anymore because it's been suppressed by the drug. So again, I'm not saying there's not extreme cases where sometimes um, taking the drug for a short period of time to just kind of get you out of a crisis zone, I'm not saying that's always a terrible idea, but we really want to get to the root cause of this autoimmune disease. And remember, it all starts with your immune system doing the right thing. It didn't like something. And if it's an infectious agent, you can actually go back and find these chronic deep infections. We find them in the gut. Sometimes they're in the sinuses. Toxins, you can find heavy metal toxicity. Uh, you can find mold. There's a lot of different toxins that can occur. And then, in, you know, infections, I think I, I mentioned. So, uh, and of course, food sensitivity. So back to the person that was asking me the question about celiac disease. Does somebody have a food sensitivity that's thwarting their, um, their immune system because the immune system doesn't like it even over above gluten and celiac disease? We find food sensitivities a huge percentage of the time with autoimmune disease. So you want to sort of tease it out and see what these component parts are. But do know this, there's nothing wrong with having a healthy immune system and supporting your immune system uh, during this time of wanting to make sure you're not um, more likely to get a virus or a bacterial infection or, or any sort of infection. So. If you're on a specialized drug, you know, definitely get in touch with your doctor and say, hey, some basics like vitamin C and vitamin D, you know, and A, you know, zinc, are these things fine for me? And if your doctor has a very specific reason as to that drug and that nutrient, then fine, find that out, but then ask about all the others as well. Um, I hope this made sense and, and it's a really, really brilliant question and I, and I hope uh, those with autoimmune disease find it helpful because you, you can get into a quandary thinking, wow, my immune system is, is, is too active so the last thing I want to do is support it. You do want to support it. You, you do want to um, normalize its function. The autoimmune aspect is, is another aspect of what the immune system is doing. It's not, um, and unfortunately what tends to happen is is you, you kind of move away from the, as I say, the, the immune system acting the way it should act, which is against bad guys, to shifting to um, a functioning of the immune system that gets into this self-attack, which of course is not good, but we've, we've seen with those steps I mentioned earlier, we can shift it back again. But again, contact your doctor if you're on an immunosuppressive drug. Make sure there's nothing in particular that he or she finds to be a problem. And then the very last part of the question for this individual was that um, she asked, uh, because she has celiac disease, but it's under control, meaning uh, she stays off gluten, she doesn't have any symptoms, is she considered immunosuppressed? And I would say no. Uh, now there's a lot of people's immune systems are not functioning quite as well as they should for other reasons. But if she feels healthy, she's staying off gluten, so she's not um, adding to the fire of how her immune system was attacking her small intestine, she's doing the right thing by staying off that gluten, then there's no reason for her to consider herself immunosuppressed. I don't know her whole health history, but based on just uh, the question, that would be my answer. So if you have autoimmune disease and you want to see if there's uh, something that can be done to really chill out that immune system, have the self-attack stop or at least ameliorate, lessen, please reach out. We're really good with autoimmune disease here at Root Cause. We've had a lot of great success and, and it's a natural program. It's not something that's going to get in the way of any medication that you're taking, but it can really, really get to the root cause. So uh, please give me a call 408-733-0400. I look forward to talking to you.